Hey, everybody, and happy Wednesday. So glad that you're joining us for our all online youth night tonight. It's going to feel a lot like it we did in the spring with all our online stuff, with games and worship and teaching, uh, but I'm looking forward to it. Again, the reason that we're doing this all online night is so that our leaders can gather together on site at Fanshawe to talk through the rest of the fall. We've got some great plans that we're going to talk about in just a moment, uh, but we want to be able to do ministry better and to have more and more uh, for you to be able to do on site. And so we're looking forward to it. I hope you are too, and I hope you enjoy tonight. So before we get started, let me pray really quickly, and then we'll talk a little bit about what the rest of this fall is going to look like. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for our students and for online youth nights and on-site youth nights and all the great fun that we, we've been able to have so far this fall. Thank you for our leaders and all the time that they give and the way that they volunteer of themselves and give so much of themselves for our students. And God, we just ask that tonight would be fruitful not only for us on site with our leaders, but for our students as well as they continue to learn and continue to engage in this content uh, about family matters. So thank you again for our students. Thank you for our leaders. And we ask that we would just have a really great night together. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Awesome. All right. So quickly, before we get started tonight, I need to tell you about what the next six weeks looks like. So we have a, an important announcement that we're going to be sending out more details about in these next few days. Uh, but we are going to be doing everything on site going forward. Now, I know that's a little bit confusing, but the first thing that you need to know is we're going to continue to do every other week with junior highs and high school students on site at Fanshawe. But the important and exciting thing is that on the off week, so junior highs on site at Fanshawe, high school students are going to be on site at our Huron campus of North Park. So again, that's not very far. It's only about five minutes away, but we're going to be gathering the opposite group. So if it's junior highs at Fanshawe, the high school students are going to be at Huron. If high school students are on site at Fanshawe, junior, high si junior highs are going to be on site at Huron. We're going to keep alternating every week for the next six weeks to give it a shot and see how it goes. But we're really excited about it because that means that we don't need to be doing the online stuff. We're still going to offer our teaching online. So every Thursday or maybe Wednesday night, we're going to post the teaching for that week on uh, our YouTube channel so that you can go back and watch it if you were missed a week or if you're not able to join us on site. Um, and then we're going to continue to get feedback. So if we find out that more and more people want to be doing online stuff because they can't and then maybe they're not allowed to come on site, then we'll make adjustments from there. But for the next six weeks, we're going to try it this way and we're going to see how it goes. So we're excited. We hope you're excited. Uh, but back to tonight. We have a great night planned. We've got some worship. We've got some teaching and we've got a game featuring both Hannah and Jared this week, which is kind of fun. And so we're going to get right into that. And I'll be back in just a moment to talk a little bit about our, about our teaching. See you soon. Welcome to Trivia with Jared and Josh. We got our amazing assistant Hannah behind the computer. She's and so talented. So talented, really. Oh, Josh, thank you for those compliments <laughs> to Hannah, I guess. Um, She's just great, you know? <laughs> we've got uh, four categories this evening. We have trivia. Each category has three questions. So... Get ready. If you have a piece of paper nearby or a pen, or if you don't, go grab that immediately. Or if you just have a really good memory, then. Or that too, I guess. Yeah. Or your phones. Or really any way to keep track of your score. Because. Just preferably not the wall. Would not <laughs> recommend that. Yes. Um, so as I said before, as people grab their piece of paper and pen, um, we got four categories and three questions in each. Each, the categories are, we got animals. We've got space. I would fail that one. We've got sports. Also would fail that one. And we got food. Would not fail that one. No. Um, so we're tackling almost every category possible so that it's fair to everybody. Because I would do all sports, but I don't know if all of you guys would want to do all sports. To be fair, we are missing quite a few categories, but you know, that covers <laughs> the quite, that, that's fine. No one cares about the maths. No one cares about the sciences. <laughs> Or, uh, like, art, or art history. I, I mean, makes Anyways. Sense. Anyways, we're going to jump right into it. Game. I hope everybody is back from grabbing their pieces of paper and pen. Welcome back. So, Hannah, why don't you uh, take us on into f question number one. Okay. Question number one in the animal category is, how many noses does a slug have? Now, the real question I have is, is a slug really an animal? It's like a, it's not a bug. Question. Anyways, it's gross. As we think about that, you guys got 10 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. 
Welcome back. Hopefully you have a very uh, strong opinion on that last question. I definitely got it wrong when Jared asked me the first time. And then I read the question out the first time and said it wrong. So that question just <laughs> did not go well for me at any point. But hopefully it went better for you. Why don't you uh, take us into question number two? Question number two. This one's kind of fun, actually. Which is the fastest aquatic animal? We have a little fun fact for you guys, but uh, you guys got 10 seconds and come on right back. And welcome back to question number three. Jared, take it away. Last question of the animal category. So for all you animal lovers, hopefully you're three for three. This is your last chance. Last chance. On a ladybug, a little, little easy, but it's a trick question because I got Hannah Don't and Josh it's a both trick times. Question. Now they're gonna be suspicious. Well, who knows which way it goes? On a ladybug, what color are its spots? I got this one wrong. It's, it's a, it's a tricky one. Do you really know what color the spots are on a ladybug? They're actually purple and green. They change colors. So, there you go. <laughs> Let's just give them all the answers, why don't we? <laughs> all right, you guys got 10 seconds, go ahead. And welcome back. We welcome. are on to our next category, space. How exciting. I don't know much about astronomy yeah. or space. Fun fact, when I was a child, I really wanted to be an astronomer. The yeah, first people who works, go to works. space? Oh, an astronaut. An astronaut. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot what that word is. An astronaut. No judgments. No uh, judgments. Yeah, let's say that lasted about a month, and then I found out everything they had to do to be an astronaut. And then I was like, no. <laughs> well, good thing you don't need to be an astronaut to know these answers. Question number one. Which planet has a day that lasts almost eight months on Earth? So That's a very eight, long day. Eight months on Earth is one day on this planet. What planet is that? You guys got only a limited amount of planets to choose from, so. It's true, but only one chance. The so odds may ever be in your favor, is that what they say? Yeah, You got sure. 10 seconds, go for it. Okay, moving on to question number five. This one, uh, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna say, if you get both parts of this answer right, then you get a bonus point. Just because I'm <laughs> that generous. No, that's because that's how we. Okay, set it actually, up. you know what? I was gonna do it anyways, and then I saw that you wrote bonus, and I was like, oh, huh, interesting. Okay. There you are. <laughs> what was the first animal that went into orbit? Bonus. If you know the name of the animal. You're just giving away bonus points now, Hannah? What are you trying to say okay, here? Well what are you trying to say here, Hannah? I'm a generous person. That's all. That's all I can say. Sorry you guys had to see that argument. Um, this is a little taste of what happens at the office each <laughs> week. It's just great. Welcome back. Hopefully you guys got that last question. That was pretty, I think the first bit of the question was a little bit easier, but the bonus is definitely hard. I uh, got both wrong, so <laughs> 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 yes. I don't know what that says. <laughs> um, but we are in question number six, last one of the space category. So all you astronomers and uh, astronauts out there, uh, good luck with the rest of the quiz. But this is the last one. Question number six, how many Earths can fit into the sun? Is it 100,000? Is it 500,000? 800,000 or 1.3 million Earths. Those are I your four no options. Idea. Four options. We're giving you options because we understand this one would be hard. Very difficult. I have no idea, to be quite honest with you. I asked Weston this. You guys know our pal Weston. Weston got it. Weston got it, and uh, that's all I got to say. I so did Weston, get this one, actually. If Weston got it, then you guys can get it. And if Hannah and got Josh it, you definitely <laughs> can get it. That's so very true. So you guys got 10 seconds. <laughs> Go ahead. Mm. 
All righty, we're moving on to the next question and the next section, actually, of the whole thing. Uh, this is a section I may or may not be good at, but, you know, that remains to be seen. So it's trivia. I'm bad at it all. I got to say, we're Hannah good. is smarter than she is saying. She says she's getting, like, zero of these. Yes, that may be true, but she is still <laughs> smart. I true. just want to put that out there. Okay. Uh, this question, actually, I did get right, so that was fun. But uh, we're moving into the sports section. I can't remember if I said that already, but we are. Um, and the question number seven is, where did the Olympics originate? Where was the first Olympics? Did you know the answer to this question? I had an idea. I did. I did. But I knew the city. I didn't know the country, <laughs> which is kind of sad. But uh, many of you guys may know this uh, country. Um yeah, I, I did know this one. I did know this one. There you I'm go. Glad. All right. So you have 10 seconds to figure it out for yourselves. Hopefully you guys all got that one. Uh, I say, I'd say that's maybe the third easiest question on trivia um, because everything else is super random. But uh, I thought that one was the easiest. So. Ho ho I thought the ladybug one was, but you guys got it wrong. <laughs> I got it so wrong. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, moving on to question number eight. Hannah, take it away. Question number eight. I cannot read it. It says, what African country was the first ever to qualify for a World Cup? And this is soccer, for those of you who don't know. I definitely got this one wrong. And I, like, I feel like this one's not what people would first think of. No, I, I don't think so either. But uh, for but the sports, sports lovers, I think they may have an idea. Um, a little hint, I don't think they're great right now. Uh, that's my little hint. They haven't been great in a, in a while. I just want to say that. Uh, a little little hint because there are a lot of countries in Africa. So This is true. Yeah, and it could be any of them. Really, any of them. So good luck. You have 10 seconds. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Um, I keep saying hello and welcome back, and then I realize we're only gone for like 10 seconds, so it's kind of weird. But anyways, it's fine. We have a little disclaimer to make. Uh, Josh corrected us after He's our the fact last checker. question. Fact checker. He's, um, he's behind the camera. Oh, Hannah. Hannah's behind the camera. And she sorry. actually informed us. Because she's so smart. Um, that, oh, I almost said the country. The country is actually very good. <laughs> currently. Apparently, they're very good currently. And they have one of the best players, apparently, currently. So I, I was wrong, and uh, the fact, fact checker uh, corrected me. So thank you very much. Um, we are on to question number nine, uh, which is a very fascinating piece of information. Uh, you can pull this out of your back pocket uh, oh next boy. time that you're around people and want to look smart. But... How many minutes, this is question number nine, how many minutes was the longest recorded point in the history of tennis? Longest recorded point in the history of tennis. So they were hitting it back and forth across the net for how long? How many minutes? I, yeah, that was a part. Of, I just <laughs> want to make sure that was part of the question. How many minutes? I also feel the need to uh, clarify. We have lots of faith in you guys, but also <laughs> you're not allowed to use Google. Oh, yes. Hopefully you haven't up to this point. Um, I'm honestly, looking at a couple of you that I, I, I see from the stage when we're playing games, checking your phones. I'm thinking of you guys right now, but we are trusting you are not using Google. I know this one's a hard one. Honestly, I was way off. <laughs> um, I will but get don't this do it. We'll mention this in the answers as well. But if you get within two minutes of the right answer, you also get the point. But we'll remind you of that when we come back Say around the with answers. the point, uh, answers, okay? So how many minutes was the longest recorded point in the history of tennis? Go ahead, you guys got 10 seconds. Hopefully you guys weren't stumped by that one, uh, but we actually have another disclaimer we were corrected again. <laughs> we were corrected again. The soccer team of the World Cup, uh, the first African team, they aren't actually that great right now. Our fact checker fact checked himself, 
and found out that he was or she was wrong. And so, yes, ignore all of our advice about question number eight. Um, we're not going to waste any more time. Question number 10. We are on to the food category. This is the last category of our trivia. So if you are a food And lover, arguably the best one, let's be real. <laughs> there we are. Said it from Hannah herself, or Josh himself. Um, question number 10. What food is the most ordered in America? In America, what food is the most ordered? What's your guess, Hannah? When or I guessed, this could be right or wrong. I'm not going to say. But my guess was burgers. That's what I said. Am I right? Am I wrong? <laughs> You'll never know. Just kidding. You will. Well, in just like think about minutes. all the fast food restaurants. What is ordered the most? Could be Because Uber burgers? Eats delivers now, so it's clearly ordered. It can't just be pizza because pizza is the only food you really got delivered in the past. But now it's Uber Eats, all these different things. Skip the dishes, you know. Um, also, we got to say we are sponsored by Paper. We're not sponsored by Uber Eats, so full dis disclosure. Um, Paper, don't use it. Save trees. What food is the most ordered in America? You got 10 seconds. And we're back with question number 11. Hannah, why don't you read it off to us? Okay. What is the world record for a number of hot dogs eating eaten in one sitting? I, as I was reading it, I was like, I'm going to say eating in one sitting. And then <laughs> I did. So there you go. That'd be funny. Anyways, um, what is the world record? Just for so hot you know, dogs eaten at one if time? you thought you knew this answer a year ago, you probably did. But in the past year, this record has been broken. So if you are up, you have to be up to date with your hot dog eating numbers otherwise just take a wild right. stab at it because so i had no idea good luck and just like uh question number what was it question number nine if you get it within one point one 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 hot dog then you get the question right all right wow so you got you got to take a guess good luck you got 10 seconds Alrighty, we are back for our final question. Honestly, I was gonna say this took, was like, it just flew by, but that's completely a lie, because it's been a while. It's, it's been <laughs> we've a been here a while. And we've really enjoyed being your hosts. So uh, as we- It's been real fun. As it's we been a time. the last question, we still got all the answers to roll out. Oh but, boy. Uh, but we've been really enjoying doing these questions. So on to our final question. Uh, number 12, for those of you keeping track. Approximately, how many pounds of food does the Dwayne The Rock Johnson consume daily? How many pounds of food? This man is huge. This man's huge. He works out every day. I don't know his whole schedule. But a little hint. An average human, probably American, this is an American fact, so probably American, an average person eats three to four pounds of food each day. Do you think he eats more or less? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got 10 seconds. And welcome back. We've said that many times, <laughs> but we are on to welcome part again. two, really. Part two where you figure out if you got the right answer. I gotta say, this is probably the hardest trivia I've done uh, or prepared because we haven't given you guys options. This is true trivia. Um, besides maybe question number six, you haven't had given any multiple choice, never been given the answers. Um, and so, yeah, this has probably been the hardest trivia you guys have had to do. To if date. you get all these right, you are a true trivia true star. True trivia champion. There you go. Um, we are gonna jump right into it. Question number one. How many noses does a slug have, Hannah? The correct answer was four. Four. Which, honestly, I was really shocked by. Four noses. Uh, it is still to be determined if it is an actual animal um, because it's in the animal category, but it's not a human, so it's in the animal category. Moving along to question number two. 
which was, what is the fastest aquatic animal? Which is? The sailfish. People that I, I asked that did not get this right, but uh, congratulations if you got it. A little fun fact about sailfish, it can reach up to speeds of 68 miles per hour. What is that? That's almost... It's very fast. That's almost like 95 kilometers per hour I or do so? not 100 know. 100 kilometers per hour, maybe more. Um, but cheetahs get up to 70 miles per hour, so they're almost as fast as, as cheetahs. Um, Which is crazy. I didn't know there was aquatic animals that went that fast. Exactly. Um, question number three. On a ladybug, what color are its spots? They're I black. said, bl yeah. Okay, so the answer is black. I said brown because I thought it and was Josh a trick question. Josh said blue or something. Um, but, it's but it's what black. you originally thought. So it's a trick question, and they're not red. Uh, I was I was trying to catch some people thinking that they're red, but they are in fact black. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, moving on to question number four was our first question about space, and it was. Okay, sorry, I told you. Which planet has a day that lasts almost eight months on Earth? The answer is Venus. Didn't know that one. There, there you, you go. Now you if know. You s if you guessed Venus, you are correct. If there is a scientific reason why, maybe it's the furthest planet away from everything or the closest planet. I don't know. It's not the closest planet. It's not the closest planet, but I think it's the furthest planet. But I could be completely wrong. <laughs> I don't think so. It might not be. Um, if you know the scientific reason and you're in the YouTube chat, why don't you put it there? Because, uh, and you guys might be already chatting about how we've gone a lot of these wrong or something, but uh, toss in the chat and tell us why Venus has a day that lasts eight months on Earth. Um, question number five. What was the first animal that went into orbit? Bonus if you know the name. It's my favorite animal. It the is. The dog. There the dog went into space first. And bonus bonus uh, uh, point? point is the name of the dog was... You can take a shot at how to I pronounce it. I think it's Laika. L-A-I-K-A. Laika is how I would say it. Laika. Depends on if it was a Russian dog or a German dog or uh, an American dog. Who really knows? Um, that's that's the name of the dog. There you go. There what you a go. Name. What a name. Question number six. How many Earths can fit into the sun? You guys had a one four chance to get this correct. 1.3 million Earths can fit into the sun. There you go. That's it's a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. But you guys had a... 25% chance on getting that correct. So, so good uh, job if you did. Well done. We are on to our sports category. Question number seven, which Wh was? Where did the Olympics originate? The correct answer for this one is Greece. To be Greece. specific, Athens. Athens. I knew. But if Ath you said Greece, that's right. I knew Athens, but for some reason I had a mind blank and was like, where is Athens located? What country? Um, and so that was my explanation as to why I, I knew the city, not the country. Shameful. But, but Greece. Greece is the answer. Well done for whoever got that. Um, well, let's take a minute. We're at, we're at question number seven. Um, going on to question eight. Write in the chat how many you have correct currently. You guys may be already doing this, but write in the chat how many you have correct currently so that you know who you're up against if... Uh, if some of you guys are tied at 7-7 seven seven or 7-7 seven for seven, or if you're 2-7 for seven and that's the best record so far, you'll at least know who you're competing against. Yeah. So write your, write your score in the chat right now um, with six questions left, I believe. I'm also really curious to know, so if you want to, if you are doing really well, uh, shoot us a message on Instagram because I would really just like to know. Yeah. And correction, we have five questions left. I just counted them up. Math. Um, second sports question. What African country... Oh, this one was hotly debated here at the youth team. What African country was the first ever to qualify for a World Cup in soccer? And the answer is... Egypt. Egypt. Egypt was the first African country to qualify for the World Cup. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say about it. We've already talked about it enough. So we're going to move right move on. on. <laughs> right on. We're going to move on to question number nine. My favorite question. The most interesting question, I think, in all of all of this trivia. How many minutes was the longest recorded point in the history of tennis? 
The answer is 29 minutes. So if you wrote 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, any of those, you get this point. Because I said two points within two, two minutes, you got the point. So if you said 27, 28, 29, 30, or 31, you get the point. Fun fact, remember, that's one singular point in tennis. They hit the ball over the net 643 times. The rally was 643 shots. That's insane. Yes. The average rally I play is like four times over the net, and then I hit it into the net. My average is like one, so that's just real impressive. I can't imagine It's unreal. That. Um, that is the final question of our sports category. Hannah, why don't you true. start us off with the foods? With food. All right, the food section. Question number 10 was, what food is the most ordered in America? This one I got wrong. If you guessed the same as me and said burgers, eh, incorrect. The correct answer is fried chicken. Fried there chicken. There you go. I didn't I know it was that popular. I knew it was a thing. I just didn't know it was that popular. Uh, but there you yeah, go. I would have guessed pizza. I would have guessed anything else. Anything really. Anything else, really? Because just kidding, I don't not think anything fried else. chicken is a big thing in Canada. I think it's bigger in the States than it Definitely is here. Definitely bigger in the States there than you Canada. Go. Now you know. Now you know. Question number 11 was, what is the world record for number of hot dogs eaten in one sitting? And the correct answer for that one was? 75. 75. So I think the previous world record was 72 by Joey Chestnut. And if a fact checker can correct us, um, he's not actually, you guys can all be our fact checker. Um, I think he beat it this year in 2020. Um, and he got 75. That's so if you crazy. said 74, 75, or 76, you guys got the, got the point. All right, well you done. You are correct. I believe our fact checker is telling us that yeah, you are correct. Yeah, fact checker says we're correct. We're never wrong. Ever. <laughs> Ever. Um, and the final question. Approximately, final yeah, yes. final, final question. Approximately, how many pounds of food does the actor Dwayne The Rock Johnson consume daily? We consume an average of three to four pounds a day. And that's Americans, and, and I'm not going to bash on them, but I think they eat more than us. I so know. I think I may eat three, three pounds a day. He eats 10 pounds of food. 10, Ten pounds. pounds. Ten that pounds. means if he did not sweat, if he did not use the washroom, if he did not shower, if he did not do anything that makes you lose weight, he would gain 10 pounds a day. 10 pounds is going into his body. It's a lot of food. 10 pounds. Anyways, on that note, if you got that answer correct, you got the point. Woohoo! Well, that, that's all we have for trivia today. That wraps it up. So uh, with a very impromptu little uh, rap we got going here, we got... What? Well, thank you for coming to trivia. We are all done for today. I hope you enjoy the worship and teaching that was coming your way. Hey! Wow. wow, that was a great ending to the trivia. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Have a great rest of your night. Hi guys, uh, before we jump into worship today, let's just say a quick word of prayer um, and then we'll get into it. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much that we have this chance to come together and worship you, even though we're not together in person, um, but we can be together um, online and uh, in spirit. So God, I just pray that uh, you would prepare our hearts for worship and prepare our hearts for the message Maddie has to come and say to us. Um, God, that we would just be here for you, that we would be focusing on you and worshiping uh, you and for you, um, and that would be all we think about for the next couple minutes. Um, yeah, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
All right, let's start with an obvious statement. Things change. So I want you to think back to grade two, when you're in grade two. The things that you are wearing are probably very different than when you're in grade two. And maybe you, even your haircut has changed since grade two. I used to have a bit of a bowl cut in grade two, so I'm like really glad that that's changed. And the music and the TV shows and the movies, all of that has probably changed since you were in grade two. Just think about it. And that type of change is expected and good. I hope that some of those things have changed since when you were in grade two. Because, you know, you just kind of grow up and you grow out of some of those things and it just changes. And that's good. And that's expected. It's kind of like with the seasons. Every three to four months, we just expect that the seasons are going to change where we live. In December, November, we're going to get snow on the ground. And then in July and August, it's going to be super sunny and super warm. And then September, October, the leaves are going to change, kind of like where we are at now. So there's this expectancy that these changes are going to happen, and we're ready for it. But then there are some things that change in life that are unexpected and more difficult to process. For example, maybe you used to be really close with this person and you're really great friends and now all of a sudden you aren't friends anymore. Whether that be because of a conflict or somebody moved or life just changed a little bit. But you're like, oh, I wish that never changed and I wish we could still be really good friends. Or maybe it's a group of friends and you had this really tight-knit group of people, you were really close, you did everything together and now you're not that close anymore. And you're like, oh, I wish that never changed because that was really, really good. Or maybe it's a location change. Maybe someone that you're really close with had to move away, or maybe you had to move away, and you have to figure out how do I meet new friends in this new school, and how do I live in this new neighborhood, and how do I get through the grocery store? So there are changes that are sometimes unexpected and difficult because we just, we're not quite sure how to maneuver through them, and it throws us off just a little bit. So there are lots of ways these unexpected changes can happen. It could be uh, an injury or a sickness, whether that be for you or for someone close to you. It could be financial stress with your family, or it could be getting cut from a team that you were just really hoping to be on, or you fail a grade or a class, and you're just like, oh, this was a change that happened that I was like super not expecting and super didn't want to happen. And normally, let's say in this hand, this is where the change is happening, these changes happen, and then all of a sudden, you are trying to find these secure, stable people in your life, the things that are constant, because you're like, this is really disrupting my life and I don't know how to process this change, so I need to go here where this person is not gonna change and I need to talk it out with them. You know what I mean? At least that's what I do. Sometimes when these things change, I find these secure, constant people in my life to talk those things through with. And for some of us and for some of you listening, family is that constant. Family is that secure place that you go to. You know that they have never left and they're never going to leave. But for some of you watching, I recognize that your family is not that safe, secure, stable, constant place to go. And I recognize that that is a difficult place to be. But somewhere probably in all of us, we have this idea that family should be the constant. That family should be the place that we go to so that when these things do change, we know that they are there to talk those things through with us. But what happens when our family dynamic changes? and not necessarily always for the better. What happens when those changes? That can be really difficult if we have this idea that that should be the thing that's constant and never changes. So what could some of those changes look like? It could be your parents getting a divorce. And maybe you've already experienced this. Maybe you're experiencing it right now. Maybe you haven't yet, and that's okay. But divorce and figuring out how do I now live in two different homes, and maybe there's conflict in the middle of that, and figuring out how to manage that change can be really difficult. Or maybe you had a parent or a sibling or a close family relative that passed away unexpectedly. And now you have to figure out how do you live life without them there all the time. That is a really difficult change to maneuver. Or maybe there are some other changes like a parent getting a job in a new location and not only is that change with your parent having to figure out how to do that new job in that new place, but then the whole family has to move. And so how do you move and adjust with that whole change? How do you figure out, okay, my parent has a new job and now I'm in a new neighborhood and in a new school and maybe even in a new, new city. How do I figure out that change? Because everything changed. Or maybe your sibling went away to college or university and now the person that maybe you were really close with that sibling, they're now no longer there and they've gone off. Those changes 
happen and are normal. And the closest example for me to share with you is that when my brother got married, he was married really young. And I, all, I said, all I remember is that one day he was there, and then one day he was married, and he was not coming back. And I quite didn't quite know how to process that. It's like, how do I now live my life within my family with my brother no longer there and a new person being added to the family? So these types of changes happen and can be really difficult for us to figure out. But the trick is not trying to stop some of those changes, because change is inevitable, not saying that all those examples that I gave are going to happen. But when change happens, our mindset matters. So we're going to talk about that a bit more today. So you've probably heard of this crazy book called the Bible. And you might be thinking, the Bible is this super old book that has no use for my life, and it just sits on the shelf and collects dust, because why would I want to read words from so many thousands of years ago? Well, let me tell you. There's something in the Bible that is relevant for us today because if we're talking about change, change is not something that's new. Change didn't just happen like 20 years ago and now all of us have to figure out how to change. Change has been happening since the beginning of time. And so a lot of the authors have experienced change and have written about it so that we can learn, oh, like maybe this is how we can deal with change better. So we do have some things to learn from the Bible. And there's this great book called Ecclesiastes. Uh, challenge for this week, try and say Ecclesiastes like 10 times fast, and it's going to be awesome. Just record yourself, send it to Josh, and we'll have a little challenge. But the guy who wrote Ecclesiastes, his name was Solomon. And Solomon was very wise, and he said some things about change that we can learn from today. So let's read it together. In Ecclesiastes 3, it says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Wow, that was a lot of different times. But basically what Solomon is saying is that we aren't going to stay in one season forever. We're not always going to be in a time when we need to be embracing everything. Sometimes we have to let go of the embracing. Sometimes we have to be searching and sometimes we have to not be searching. So he's basically saying change happens. It's inevitable. Seasons change, the ebbs and flows, and sometimes we need to be doing something, and sometimes we need to not be doing something. So way back, Solomon from the book of Ecclesiastes, so long ago, understands change and is trying to help us figure out how we can maneuver change as well. But he's basically saying change is happening, change happens, we just have to figure out how to get used to it. And knowing that change happens is the first part of the battle, because when we know that change happens, We can go forward expecting it a little bit more. But then there's this guy named Isaiah, and he also recognized that change happened a lot. And he wanted to give some encouragement to people as they experienced some change. So let's look in Isaiah chapter 43. And he says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned the flames will not set you ablaze. So Isaiah is giving us a promise directly from God to us. These are promises from God. And he's saying, when you're going to be in water and it feels like you're drowning, I'm there. When you're in a fire and it feels like you're going to burn and totally be destroyed, I'm there. He's there. He is present with us through it all. But not only that, he says, when you're in the water and you feel like you're drowning, I'm not going to let the water drown you. Or when you're in the fire and it feels like you're burning, I'm not going to let the fire destroy you. He doesn't necessarily say he's going to take it away. He's not going to always move the water or move the fire. Sometimes he might, but sometimes he doesn't. But he says even in those moments, even when it's so hard and even when change is happening and you're not quite sure how to do it and you wish that that change wasn't happening, we have this guaranteed promise from God saying, I am with you and I'm not going to let it destroy you. So if we think about family changes that happen, whether you've experienced some of those family changes already or are in the middle of it or might experience it later on, we have this truth from God that he is with us always and he's not going to let any of those changes destroy us completely. So how can we prepare ourselves better 
for when these unavoidable changes happen in our life. So we've already talked about two things, and these are two things that we can really hold to. One is that change happens. We know that. It's a guarantee. Change happens. Just look every three to four months outside, and you're going to know that change happens. And holding to that and knowing that helps us go forward with a little bit more confidence, and we're not going to be as shocked. But the second thing is that God is always with us, which we heard as a promise in the book of Isaiah, that God is not going to let the waters drown us. He's not going to let the fire destroy us. He's always with us every step of the way, no matter what type of change it is. But with that, our perspective really does matter, and it has a lot of power over how we maneuver through some of that. So we're going to look at some examples through um, some sunglasses that we could potentially wear. Maybe you own some of these sunglasses, and maybe you don't. And these all just represent different perspectives and different ways that we can view change. Are you ready for this? All right, let's look at the first one. These are the life sucks lenses. Sometimes you might just look at a situation and be like, woe is me, everything is terrible, I wish this never happened to me, and I'm just going to curl up in a ball. And there's a lot of temptation to do that. There's a lot of temptation to put these glasses on and say, life sucks, like why even bother? Those are not very fun glasses to be wearing. And they're really difficult, not only for you, but also for people around you to see you wearing those sunglasses. So what could another pair of sunglasses be? There's the blast to the past lenses. Sometimes you want to put these lenses on and be like, oh, I wish that things didn't change. I wish that my parents never got a divorce. I wish that my sibling never went away to college. I wish that this friend group was still together. And you just wish for the past. But if we're so focused looking in this direction at the past, we don't necessarily see maybe some of the good things or how God might want to be using that situation going forward because we are looking in the wrong direction. But again, it can be really tempting to look to the past and be like, oh, I wish that we were still over here. There's also the give me the control lenses when you want to just take control and try to stop the change from happening. And that is also a great temptation where we're trying to, you know, keep the friend group together because we don't want to change anything when maybe there's some unhealthy relationships there that maybe need to, to separate a little bit. Or maybe your parents have just told you that they're getting a divorce and you're trying really hard to keep their marriage together because you don't want change to be happening. And sometimes these changes aren't for us to control. Sometimes we have to step back and not try to control it. But what we can control is how we respond and how we react. So let's look at two other pairs of sunglasses that might be more helpful going forward. These are the what can I learn lenses. So they're kind of like work goggles. So this is the I'm going to get down to work and figure out what can I learn from this experience. If change is going to happen and change is happening right now, whether it be in your family or elsewhere, there's always something that we can be learning. Maybe it's simply just patience. Maybe it's finding joy in the midst of things that are really painful. Maybe it's learning to go to God first. Or maybe it's learning to rely on the people around you to help you through that change. There's always something that we can learn going forward, even when it's difficult. And then the other pair of lenses is the who can I lean on lenses. So we talked about how uh, when things change, sometimes the first thing that you look for is a secure, constant place to go to talk through that change. So who are those people that you can lean on during those change, those th the times that are changing? Maybe it's a small group leader. Maybe it's a teacher. Maybe it's a really close friend. Maybe it's your parent. It's who can I lean on? So while I figure out how this change is going to impact my life, who are those people that you can lean on in the community that you can wrap around you? I know for me that whenever I've experienced change and then I talk about it with people really close, I actually get extra close with those people because we, have, we get to work through that change together. So who are those people that you can lean on? Because we don't want to walk through some of these changes by ourselves. If you're going through a family change right now, this is a great opportunity to wrap your small group in and your small group leaders and talk about that with them so that they can journey through it with you. Because we aren't meant to do some of these things alone. So when change happens, what lenses are you going to put on? Are you going to put on the life sucks, woe is me, or the I want to go to the past and try and go back to what it used to be, or are you going to try to control everything? Or are you going to put on the lenses that say, okay, there's something that I can learn here. 
And who are the people that I can lean on and walk through this change with? Which glasses are you going to wear? All right, as we close off this series, I just want to pray for you all. It has been so great joining you. Um, but as we all maneuver change, because it is inevitable, I just want to pray over each and every one of you today. And God, we have learned today that, well, it's not actually a new learning, but change happens. Change happens all the time. And sometimes that there are changes in our lives that are difficult and tough to figure out. And we just wish that it never had to happen. And God, if there are students that are listening today that are right in the middle of that, I just pray that you um, help them know that um, though they are feel like they're drowning in water, or being burned by a fire, that you are with them and that you are not going to let it destroy them and that you are going to be with them every single step of the way. And God, for students who are going to be experiencing change soon, whatever that may be, uh, we just pray that um, you would prepare them for that change and that um, they would know to just lean on you and to trust on you. Um, and not just that, but also the people in their lives that they would have constant supports that they can um, run to as well when those things change. So we just thank you for the series on Family Matters. And um, I just pray that some of the things that have been learned will be deeply rooted in each and every one of our hearts. Amen. Thank you again, Maddie, for coming and bringing us that teaching this week. Um, this has been the conclusion of our Family Matters teaching series. I hope that you've learned something. I hope you, ha I hope you have something to put into practice over the next few weeks and months. Uh, and we're just excited for what God will continue to do within us. So that is the end of our night tonight. Uh, quickly before we go, I wanted to say thank you for joining us. And don't forget, we're back into our next kind of six week, uh, um, you know, block of dates uh, next week. So we're going to have our junior highs on site at Fanshawe and our high school students on site at Huron. We're really looking forward to it. I hope you are too. For more details, make sure you have your parents checking the parent email. Uh, hit us up on Instagram or check in with your small group leader and they'll tell you more about what's going on. But we're really looking forward to it. I hope you are too. Um, and with that, we'll close the night out. Have a great one and we'll see you again very soon.